We'll continue to follow that news alert. We've been telling you about sources telling AP that George Zimmerman will be charged with second degree murder and that he is now in police custody. We expect that an official announcement will be made at 6 o'clock from the special prosecutor in this case. Right now, Tampa Defense Attorney Anthony Rickman joins us now to talk about this. Mr. Rickman, thank you for coming in. Tell me, first of all, your reaction to this second-degree murder charge. Well, at first I was a little surprised, and I still am. I anticipated something like a manslaughter charge or an aggravated manslaughter charge based on the age of the victim. Uh, you were looking at a potential of a manslaughter charge, but to come with a second degree, it was shocking to me, and it still is shocking to me right now. And why are you so surprised, though? Well, because of the facts that have come out, to prove that second degree, you have to prove that he intentionally committed an act with a depraved mind, meaning that he did an act and, and put himself in that position to commit that act. But does the 911 call show that? Because um, he let the 911 operator know that he saw somebody he thought was suspicious. He followed Trayvon Martin. The 911 operator told him not to do that, but he kept on. So does that indicate something? Well, it indicates that he put himself in that position. The act of actually shooting Trayvon and how that shooting occurred is what the main issue is. For instance, that shooting occurred as a result of them struggling for the gun and the firearm went off and Trayvon was shot. They'd be looking at a manslaughter because the act we reasonably foreseen. What they're saying by a second degree is that he took out that firearm and he committed an act with a depraved mind with the intent or knowing that his actions could kill Trayvon, which could. And second degree murder or is, is very reasonable in the circumstances. One thing is we don't know all the evidence. We don't know what the prosecutor has and what we only have snippets of what's been released. So uh, it's a wait and see as to what she based this decision on. Exactly. We don't have all the information yet. That information should be forthcoming at 6 o'clock. So now that we know this, now that we know it's going to be a second-degree murder charge, what happens now? Because doesn't this now have to go to the judge? Well, it all go to the judge. Once he's charged, he's going to be charged. He, as from what we hear now, he's in custody. After being placed in custody, a bond will be set, if not a bond is already set. At that point in time, I'll have the opportunity to go in front of a judge for a first appearance post a bond, uh, and then start the process of defending himself in this case. Um, once it gets in front of the judge, once the discovery process comes out, then we'll hear the rest of the information. We'll start hearing the defenses. Uh, so either way, it is going to court and it's going in front of the judge. The state has decided at this point in time, from what we know, to charge him with a criminal offense. And so the prosecutor has to prove probable cause to the judge for this uh, case to move forward. Is that right? Well, the prosecutor's already established, based on her own investigation, probable cause to make that arrest. He then goes in front of a first appearance, which we should see uh, pretty shortly, most likely tomorrow morning, uh, if he doesn't post a bond sooner than that, where they have to establish on the record the probable cause to hold him. Um, at that point in time, it then proceeds to the trial phase, where you can make the arguments as to uh, self stand your ground, motion to dismiss, and then the trial eventually. And again, so many people thought that it was going to be a manslaughter charge, but it's second degree murder. So explain the two differences again between the two. The main difference is the mindset of the person committing the act. And of, of course, the level of offense and the seriousness of the offense. A second degree murder now, you're looking at a minimum of somewhere around 17 years with a maximum of life. As opposed to a manslaughter, when you're looking at a minimum of around 10 years with a maximum based on Trayvon's age of 30. Had he been under the age, over the age of 18, it'd be a maximum of 15. Uh, so that's the main distinction between the two charges. And going into the actual elements of the crime, they have to prove the de depraved mind is what the statute says. As opposed to a manslaughter, if they were to charge manslaughter, they'd prove one, Trayvon is dead, two, Zimmerman killed him, and three, that that killing of Trayvon was not justified. Uh, in shifting gears to the, the second degree murder, they have to prove that, that he acted in a way that he could know that, that the death would be caused, and he acted away intentionally doing an act which one will foresee, or a reasonable person will foresee, causing death. So many details still to be released, and again, the special prosecutor will make an announcement at 6 o'clock this evening. Hopefully, we can get all of these questions answered. Anthony Rickman, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you.